Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Seen before a lot of you 2.3 guys. Uh, seemed like the, those little videos I made on the turbo coop head and engine now were quite well received. So here's a little bit more. Nothing as spicy. This is uh, from my friend, English friends. He has a 77 Cobra II Mustang. I'll show you a picture right here up on the side. And his car is down for a little bit. So he had a problem with, I mean, this is, it's a Cobra II, but it's still a four cylinder Cobra II. So over here in England, that's a big deal. You know, still maintaining four cylinders and they kind of like their Pinto engines here. They like a V8, but they can afford the four cylinder version. So that's what we have. And it's a, it's a box stock 2.3, you know, a little carburetor. He's got a header on it, you know, and right now we're in the process of converting it from his four speed to a T5, get rid of the tiny little axle it has in there and putting an eight inch in it with the traction lock. Now, even like previous video, you saw me rebuilding the traction lock, uh, putting a traction lock diff in an eight inch housing. And that was for his car. He just hasn't got around to it yet, but so this head gasket was leaking actually oil seeping out because we think it, I don't think it's the original head because I can see the date code is uh, 8D. So that's 78, January, March. And so March, so this kind of puts this head like a year newer than his car is, which is kind of weird. So I don't know if it was a replacement or factory service replacement. I don't know exactly the story. I'm sure he doesn't either. He just, he's got it. He had to replace the cam in it since he owned it because one of the lobes went flat. But right now, since he had to take the head off because it was leaking, I'm just going to blow it apart, make sure all the guides are good, make sure the valve job's good, check the springs, maybe do a little bit of porting, nothing too crazy, just making it a really nice head, you know, that you can put back on and he doesn't have to worry about it for a while and we'll fix a lot of the issues that it's had. So follow along and I'll bring you in closer and take a look at what we got. All right, like I said, nothing too crazy. I told <laughs> before I picked it up, at least I degreased the thing. I think he degreased it in like gasoline or something. That's what it smells like, but he just wasn't a big oily mess when I went to pick it up. They already popped out just one of the, the followers just to make sure nothing was too crazy. If you've never done it before, this isn't a you know, roller cam engine or anything like that, but he can use a, a wide pickle fork, get in here into the cam, kind of push down. Let me put you on a tripod. I'll just show you how you can pop these out real quick. All right, let's see how this works with the uh, the camera on now. Let's get in here. It's a little loose on this bench, but let's press the spring and it'll slide right out. So let me see if I can repeat it. Get that off the base circle. There it goes. Press it down, pop it right out. So next. All right, it took like three minutes. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna make some organization for these things, get the lash adjusters out, try to get the cam out next and see how far that gets me. All right, I just numbered them here, one through eight. I realized halfway through that I did turn the head around, get the other springs and it didn't change the order. So I just, you know, there was only four of them. So I re jiggered them, sent them all right back in the same right order. But I he had to have changed these HLAs out, these lash adjusters, cause they are like brand brand new, no carbon on them. So, uh, We'll just do a diligence. We'll put these all in order as they come apart. And I gotta get this cam out and we wanna see what's up with these springs and get these valves out. All right, so here's it pretty much blown all apart other than I gotta get the cam bearings out. But, uh, Everything was kind of loose, I'll call it. I mean, it was running not too long ago. Somebody has been in it, other than him, to replace the, the valve guide oil seals. Probably was smoking before uh, he bought it. They tried to replace them. 
just to give the head one more lease of life but uh yeah it's going to need exhaust guides i'll say that you push them out here and i don't know if you can see the play that these things have the intakes aren't bad if it was mine i'd have them done all at the same time just for good measure and the intake i could wiggle a little bit but you know not like that A little bit of play on the intakes. Probably take more oil out of it. Probably would get more. That one's pretty bad. The intakes aren't bad. The exhaust. Yeah. Pull it out further, you can see it more. <laughs> yeah. The more forward of the head you get, the worse the exhaust valves are. Yeah, so, so let's pop these out. Let's see what I can do as far as port work goes, if anything. All right, yeah. Uh, other than being a tiny little pinto head, it's just got your standard big hangovers and things like that. So even just a mild bowl blend is going to do, uh, I think, quite a bit of seat of the pants improvement on this head. Yeah, and if it's an efficiency as well, it's still got just 45 angle seats. I don't know if these are induction hardened seats or not. It's 77, so I think they were Ford was doing them by then. They don't look eroded at all. So there's not going to be a worry about valve guide or, set or valve recession or anything like that. So that's good news. Uh, we'll give the valves a good once over. Make sure they're not going to need to be ground or anything like that before it all goes to the machine shop. Maybe you have to shim up the springs. I'll check the pressure on the springs. You know, even some porting you know, around the guide bosses. I mean, these exhaust ports are really tiny. So <laughs> anytime you have a really small port, you do a little bit, it's a lot bigger of a percentage of a gain with flow anyway. So we'll, we'll have a grinder, a die grinder. We'll large them all just a little bit, if nothing else, just to get the roughness off the wall. Look at all these big chunks of, okay, I don't know what the heck that is down there. There, <laughs> that's heavy cast iron deposits. Oh, this thing must've been flowing like junk. <laughs> so it's in a couple of these, so lots of big hangovers. Yeah, we'll be able to spruce these things up quite a bit, I think. All this big casting flash. I don't have to do much to it to really, Improve them. Let's me flip this over and just take a look at the import intake ports real quick. Yeah, a lot of carbon underneath this ridge here. So there's going to be a pretty good seat of the pants gain with some mild port work. These are quite large actually compared to the size of the valves. You could use larger valves if you really wanted to, to make it spicy. Yeah. Yeah, just a mild cleanup. Most of the work done in the bowls. Chambers, probably gonna leave alone. I don't think I'm gonna blend that back at all. Keep the compression up as much as we can. But eh, just a kind of a bog standard 2.3 liter Pinto head rebuild. So well, this will be uh, in a couple of segments. I'll just throw this out there. You know, it'll probably be like a 10 minute video or something, but a little bit of an introduction to a little project. And uh, thanks for sticking around guys. And I'll see you soon in another video.